Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the pathologic forms of red blood cells. Now, if you guys don't know, we have already discussed the basics of red blood cells, so I highly recommend you guys go to our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, where we have a playlist for Hemonk Step 1. Go check it out, and while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Now, a normal red blood cell is something you definitely need to know before you can get to know the abnormal and the pathologic forms of red blood cells. Now, we're not going to be discussing the diseases and why these red blood cells happen like they do. I'm just trying to show you guys what they look like today so you have a better understanding of uh, what you're looking at as well as what they're going to be associated with. Now, when we talk about those specific diseases, you'll have a better understanding of what's happening and why these red blood cells are coming out like they are. Now, the first uh, red blood cell that we're going to talk about is a normal red blood cell, which looks like this. Notice that you have a uniform circular shape with an area of central pallor. If you look at a red blood cell from the side view, it's going to look something like this, right? Uh, and this middle portion is what's giving you the central pallor because this divot or this indenting inward. When you look at it from the top point of view, it's going to look like this with this area of central pallor again. Okay, so this is your red blood cell from the top. Now we're going to start our conversation by talking about acanthocytes. Acanthocytes are also known as spur cells and they're associated with liver disease and a beta lipoproteinemia. What an acanthocyte looks like is these cells right here, right? This one, this one, this one. Actually, this is a better, better image. So as you can see in this cell, it is not uniform like this red blood cell right here. This is your normal RBC. Right, this is what it should look like. And as you can see, you can see these spur-like projections. It kind of reminds me of the spurs on a cowboy boot. And uh, another thing to notice is that these projections are not really uniform. Like this projection is not the same as this projection, which is not the same as this projection. So you're going to have a, uh, differing, a differing look on all of them. And each of these acanthocytes are going to look different from each other. So that is what an acanthocyte looks like. The next pathologic form is going to be uh, is going to be basophilic stippling. Now, basophilic stippling usually occurs when you are looking at a peripheral smear, um, and basophilic stippling is going to represent aggregation of residual ribosomes. Normally, they should not be present; they're taken out as the blood cell, red blood cell, is maturing. But in this case, they are not taken out, and they're going to be present. This is associated with several conditions like sideroblastic anemias, like lead poisoning, as well as thalassemias. This red blood cell right here, as you can see, does not look like any of the other red blood cells, and that's because you have these little uh, blue dots happening, so stippling, and that is called basophilic stippling. The, this is the residual ribosomes that are aggregating um, and that are a, we are able to visualize with the dye. So this is an example of red blood cells. This is a normal red blood cell. All right, that is basophilic stippling. Next, RBC form are called dacrocytes. Dacrocytes are also known as teardrop cells. As you can see here, there are so many teardrop cells right here, right here, right here. They don't normal, normal red blood cells don't look like that. This would be a normal RBC, right? And this is a dacrocyte. Now, why does this happen? It happens when you mechanically squeeze a red blood cell out of the bone marrow. So if you have an RBC right here and you have this bone marrow, Okay, obviously there's these pores in the bone marrow, and if you squeeze this red blood cell out, it's going to come out kind of like this, because you're squeezing it out. That is what a dacrocyte is. So why would you be squeezing red blood cells out of the bone marrow? Well, it's because of uh, states in your body where you're going to have bone marrow proliferation, and that's exactly what it's associated with, bone marrow proliferation, as well as thalassemias. So that is a dacrocyte, aka a teardrop cell. The next cell is a degmocyte, which is a bite cell. So it looks like right here that there has been a bite taken out of it, and there's an easy way to remember this. Now, degmocytes are associated with G6PD deficiency, and they're also associated with Heinz bodies. You might find degmocytes with Heinz bodies uh, located within them. So what are Heinz bodies? Heinz bodies are abnormal hemoglobin precipitations that occur due to oxidation of the hemoglobin sulfur hydroxyl groups to the disulfide bonds. And this, this oxidation results in the precipitation of hemoglobin. Now, when your red blood cells are circulating through your, uh, your system, the splenic macrophages are going to remove them because they're going to notice the precipitated hemoglobin. And when they remove them, they're going to pretty much take a bite out of the, the red blood cell. And that's why it's called a bite cell or a degmocyte. 
Like I said, the Heinz bodies are also associated with G6PD deficiency. Echinocytes are known as Burr cells, and they are different from acanthocytes. Acanthocytes, we talked about uh, a little while back, they look exactly like this. They look like the, the they're called spur cells, they look like the spurs on uh, cowboy boots. Echinocytes are not like that because they are smaller than acanthocytes, and their projections are more uniform, right? It looks more like uh, they all look similar to each other. The acanthocytes don't look similar to each other. That's one thing to know. Uh, these are going to be associated with end-stage renal disease, liver disease, and pyruvate kinase deficiency. We have elliptocytes. Elliptocytes are associated with hereditary elliptocytosis, uh, and this is usually asymptomatic. This doesn't carry any sort of uh, issue for the patient who has hereditary elliptocytosis. This is going to be caused by mutations in genes that encode the red blood cell membrane pro proteins, and it's going to lead to destabilization of the cytoskeleton. This is also associated with thalassemias, and this is what an elliptocyte looks like. It's exactly what its name says. It's an elliptical uh, shape of a uh, red blood cell. And uh, as you can see, this would be the nearest, closest red blood cell, I would say, or this one right here. This is a normal red blood cell. Okay. The next are Heinz bodies, and we discussed this earlier. Like I said, it's going to be abnormal precipitations of uh, the hemoglobin because of a disulfide hydro sulfide hydro group being oxidized to the disulfide bond, and these are the Heinz bodies um, that are occurring. Now, the splenic macrophages are going to remove them, which is going to lead to a degmocyte, like we said right here. This is associated with G6PD deficiency. So if you see a red blood cell with a little bit of uh, blue, like blue uh, location or blue uh, condensation, right? That is the hemoglobin precipitating, and that is what we call Heinz body. How will jolly bodies are similar to Heinz bodies because uh, they, they are very easily confused, but these are basophilic remnants of nuclear material. So this is nuclear material. In Heinz bodies, we were talking about hemoglobin precipitating. Now they're both basophilic, and that's why you're going to see these bluish, uh, bluish uh, staining happening right here, right? This basophilic staining. Now, another thing to understand is that the nuclear material is also normally removed by red blood cells, right? From red blood cells by the splenic macrophages. In this case, it is not happening. Now, why would you have Howell Jolly bodies? Well, these are going to be associated with several conditions like sickle cell disease and also a splenia and functional hyposplenia. If the spleen is not functioning properly, like in sickle cell disease, or you had to have the spleen removed, um, in order for a person to live, well, in that case, they don't have those splenic macrophages anymore, and uh, they're not going to be able to remove the nuclear remnants that are in the red blood cells. Now, this can be associated with pathologic conditions. It can also be associated with normal red blood cell production simply because the spleen is not there to take away the, uh, the um, nuclear material. Macro -ov ovalocytes are exactly what its name says. These are red blood cells that are larger than normal, right? This would be a normal red blood cell. This is a macro red blood cell. This is abnormal. It's pretty straightforward. I don't think you can mix that one up. All right. And uh, these are associated with megaloblastic anemia as well as bone marrow failure because remember first you go from uh, megalocytes and then you go to normal sites so if your bone marrow isn't producing uh, red blood cells properly you're gonna have macrovalocytes ring sideroblasts are when uh, occur when the body has iron available but it cannot incorporate it into the hemoglobin molecule itself now this is going to be due to excess iron in mitochondria and it's usually seen in the bone marrow now you can visualize this with the Prussian blue staining and this is going to be associated with sideroblastic anemia. This is a ringed sideroblast. As you can see, there is a ring occurring right here in the sideroblast and then you have this empty space right here. And then schistocytes. Schistocytes occur in uh, patients who are suffering from a variety of diseases and schistocytes are fragmented red blood cells that are due to hemolysis. 
these blood cells are being lysed and that's why you get these little tiny pieces of red blood cells right here Now these are not platelets don't get that mixed up these are lysed red blood cells as you can see right here this is not how a red blood cell should look like normally they should look more like this this is the normal red blood cell right these are fragments of red blood cells now, schistocytes are going to be associated with microangiopathic hemolytic anemias, DIC, TTP, HUS, the HELP syndrome, as well as uh, paroxysmal nocturnal dysuria, or sorry, uh, hemoglobinuria, and mechanical hemolysis due to prosthetic heart valves. Any symptom that's going to lead to hemolysis, whether mechanical or intrinsic, is going to lead to schistocytes. Sickle cells, and I'm pretty sure you guys already know this, occur due to sickling of the RBCs due to dehydration, uh, dehydration or deoxygenation or at low levels of O2. This is going to be associated with hem uh, sickle cell anemia and sickle cell disease, and these are sickle cells right here. Now keep in mind, this sickling can return back to normal when a patient is normally hydrated or has normal O2 levels or are at a normal O2 pressure and they're getting proper O2 perfusion. Spherocytes are small spherical red blood cells without central pallor. So this right here is a spherocyte. So as you can see, this red blood cell, right, this blood red blood cell is smaller than this red blood cell because this is our normal, uh, normal standard of red blood cell. And there's no central pallor as there is in the normal red blood cell. Now this is going to be associated with hereditary spherocytosis and drug-induced hemolytic anemias. Target cells are exactly what the name says. They have a target in them right here. This is a target cell. Target cells are associated with hemoglobin C disease, asplenia, liver disease, thalassemias, iron deficiency anemia, and sickle cell disease. Now, with that being said, thank you so much for listening to this pathologic RBC form uh, lecture. If you guys don't know, we have several uh, social media accounts that you guys can follow don't forget to like comment and subscribe and you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free just search mad medicine and we'll pop up